Russian train time again. It is the third time I'm taking train in this trip of mine. First was from Vladivostok to Khabarovsk and that was a modern brand new train 001 number from Vladivostok to Moscow. It was incredible, very good service, very good couch, a new one. I liked it. There was even a shower in the train. The second one was from Khabarovsk to Blagoveshensk. Decent train, not old, not uh, very new, but still good. And the third train I'm about to take from that train station of city Blagoveshensk. There are three types of trains in Russia, high-speed, express and regular trains. The fastest Russian train connects Moscow and St. Petersburg. Sapsan, what means falcon in English, can reach 250 km an hour. It covers the distance between two Russian main cities within four hours. But that's not an option for me. I'm traveling Russian Far East at the moment and here are no high-speed trains yet. They are only available in the western part of my country and here in the east I mostly take express trains. If you ever come travel Trans-Siberian visiting only major cities, you will take such kind of trains. Their average speed is something between 50 and 90 km an hour. There are also regular trains with average speed below 50 an hour, but it's highly unlikely you will take any of them. Express and regular trains can be branded. They have the modern couches, better service, and every branded train has its own unique name. I took a branded express train from Vladivostok to Khabarovsk with a lovely name Rasiya, Russia in English, and that was my best train experience so far. My next train from Khabarovsk to Blagoveshensk was branded too. Its name was Khabarovsk Blagoveshensk. Yeah, weird name. And now I'm taking a regular train from Blagoveshensk to Chita. No unique name, no additional service old cars with average speed 46 km an hour. Looking for my couch number 10 now and the only thing I need is my passport. I don't have a physical ticket as I bought the tickets online. Oh, that's here. I'm staying upstairs, seat number 36, and there's only one man um, upstairs too, and looks like these two seats are empty. I better do a voiceover for this part. There's one thing about Russian railway that is different from all other railway companies I tried before. Russian railways have a dynamic pricing system, and tickets always cost differently. You see me taking this train on September 29th, more than a month ago, and I paid for it 2968 rubles. It's second class, upper sleeper. The day I could get third class sleeper for 2700 rubles, or a second class lower sleeper for about 5000 rubles. But if I buy this ticket for, let's say, tomorrow's train, the prices will be like this. And if I need to go on November, let's say, the 20th, it will be like this. Magic of Russian railways. Another fun fact about Russian trains. Sometimes friends and relatives of passengers come inside the car to help with luggage or just to say goodbye. It's so easy to get inside the train without a ticket, so right after the train starts moving, we have the second document check. It's a standard procedure for every single long distance train. Now, every second I'm getting closer to my next destination, the city of Chita. I thought that will be my first city out of Russian Far East. Then I googled and found out that I'm wrong. Last time I was in Russia two years ago. And since then, one thing changed. Look, this is the Far East before November 2018, and this is after. I'm going to visit both of these new regions, Zabaikalsky Krai with Chita first, and the Republic of Buryatia with Olanode after that. Let's go back to the compartment, it's time to deal with my bed. Every passenger gets such pack, a tiny towel inside, clothes for a pillow, for a blanket and for a mattress. Every single time people do this shortly after departing. Next to 
my bed I also have a lamp, air conditioning, radio, a shelf, hangers, some room for my luggage and such a thing for getting upstairs which I never use. It's time to get changed, then I'll show you what I got here for food for 38 hours of train journey and have a rest. I'll be staying upstairs just reading books, using my laptop, planning future videos and just chilling, doing whatever I will do staying at home because basically that is my temporary moving home for the next, uh, again, 38 hours. So let's go get changed. style train, even a fly here. <laughs> yeah, perhaps every single old train has a fly. This time I didn't get much food. A pack of cookies, two packs of flavored oatmeal, just add hot water and eat. My dear coffee beans, I started my trip on January the 1st, 2020. And since then I used almost 2 kilos of coffee beans. A metal cup, a tiny grinder. Then come 2 packs of instant noodles. A loaf of freshly baked bread and a small pack of cheese. Right enough for such a journey. Oh yeah, I also got some booze, but alcohol is prohibited in Russian trains. Perhaps it's a new change as well, because I didn't hear about this before taking this train. Of course, here is Mr. Lenin. Welcome to Belogorsk. Our train is about to stay here for 40 minutes. Some stations along the way take really way too long time. Sometimes it's even possible to spend some time in the cities that we pass by. The longest stop I ever had in my life was for 10 full hours, just imagine that. And that was 4 years ago in Chita. Enough time for exploring the city a little, so technically it will be my second time in Chita city. Good morning, Russian grandmas. Thank you for sharing seat with me. It's a normal thing in Russian trains to share the lower seats. So good that I don't have to stay in my bed all the way long. By the way, we are getting closer to another town with a long stop. I'll use that half an hour to see Russian city with the most unusual name among the cities I visited myself. Welcome to Yerofey Pavlovich. <laughs> yeah, just got enough time to get a little bit into the city. Have a look, nothing really special here. The train station behind me. We are staying here for about half an hour. Five floor, five story buildings, like typical for Russia. And tiny monument, Soviet style. Let's have a look, what is that for? Rest in peace, Mr. Afanasiev, Litvinov, Kitasov, and about ten of them more. Yerofey Palovich is a very interesting name for a Russian city. Usually we don't call cities or towns like that. It's named after one of the Russian pioneers who came here one of the first to Russian Far East. The city of Khabarovsk has his last name and the city of Yerofey Palovich has his first name and patronymic, or middle name as we say in English. It's not the best coffee in my life, but I mean a coffee in a train is something that I really need and enjoy. about two days and two nights in a train and one hour more to a village next to Chita about to buy a ticket and sit somewhere wait for the train why village why not the city 
Long story short, I have a local friend living there. We met about five years ago in China. At that time I just moved to China and got a message from a Russian traveler passing by my city. He asked if I could host him for a few nights and of course I did that. Since then we had each other's Instagram and now it's my time to be his guest. Now I'm taking a sub arb train right to his house an hour away from the city. Only I and one grandma get off the train and what else? Well, I'm looking for my friend's house now. Get off! Get off, man. Get off, man. Get off, man. Get off, Like this video! Subscribe to this channel! Good job, guys! Let's see what is around 